And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going to be planting some vines, we're going to be growing some grapes, we're going to be harvesting those grapes in the fields, we're going to be making some wine, selling wine. We're talking about Viticulture, second edition here by Stonemaier Games. Uh, it, it plays, it says 45 to 90 minutes and two to six players. It may take a little longer than that with a lot more players, uh, but it's a worker placement game where you're making wine. Let's take a look. Here's the board for Viticulture. The object of this game is to be making wine all the way to the first person of 20 points wins. It's sort of a racing game, even though it's worker placement. And it's split up into doing summer actions and winter actions. Let's take a closer look at the board. Now notice the board has some nice writing to tell you what certain spaces do. For example, it says give tour to gain money and it shows people giving a tour. But if I flip the board over and I look at the same spot, there's no writing and it's very clean. This is an aesthetically pleasing board if you know what all the spaces do. And here you can see the whole board with no writing on it. Very nice looking. Now everybody gets their own player board as well for their color. They start with three workers, one of which is a grande worker. And also notice this has some text on it and the other side of this has a clean version of it as well. Everyone also starts with three dollars. Dollars are nice tokens here that have the amount on one side and a nice picture on the other. There's also amounts of two and five in the game. They're nice tokens. Everyone starts with a Pinot wine card. There's some extra workers that you can add later. And then there's some extra pieces like the rooster and the trellis and irrigation and things that we'll talk about later. But some lots, lots of good little wooden pieces. Now the game's played over four phases per round. Spring, summer, fall, winter, and then year end. So let's talk about how it works. Somebody will start with this little grape token here. And this will be the start player. And that start player um, will get to place their rooster on how early they want to wake up. This is similar to a game called Fresco had a mechanic like this. And the rooster, the, the whoever's first is going to be able to go in turn order for the rest of the year. So maybe green wants to go first, he goes here and gets no bonus. And then orange gets to go, maybe they go here and orange actually gets a point for going there. And maybe uh, green, uh, sorry, um, purple goes here and actually gets to take a gray worker, an extra worker for the year. So this guy would be here and he would take him and put him on his board. He gets an extra action this turn. Now for the rest of the season, they go in this order. Green, orange, purple, one worker at a time. And then we go to summer, which is the summer actions. Now you can see summer is all the uh, six uh, yellow type of action spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's pretty specific as to where you can go and what you can do. Now there's three different circles. This circle is good for two players. This one is used up to three and four players. And then this one is only turned on for five and six where all three of them are used. So in a three player game like we have here, there's two spots that, are, that can be used in pretty much every space. Some of them have a bonus. So for example, if I went here, normally I would dry, draw a vine card. But if I went here for the bonus spot, I would draw an additional card. Now if you remember, I started the game with a Pinot card, everybody does and I drew two additional wine cards. Now these wine cards uh, have different values and things on them. This one will produce one red and one white grape if harvested, harvested, one white and three white. Some of them I can plant with no, no additional things. Some of them I have to have a trellis, for example. So in this case, if we look at this, this little piece here mimics this little outline here and that's a trellis. Where if, I know this is the orange one, but this is a, um, in irrigation. So how do you get those irrigations? So in order to plant these, I would need to have either a trellis or an irrigation to plant these respectively. Then after the green player goes, it would be the orange player's turn and they would place a worker and so on and so forth. Now here we can build a structure. If someone goes there with their, their little extra worker there, this they get a dollar and they get to build one of the structures. And for example, we could build a trellis for two. Again, we're only going to be able to build one of these, but we'd spend two dollars and we would build a trellis and put it there. Or maybe we wanted that irrigation. Again, maybe there was the orange player that wanted the irrigation. They would put that on their board. Uh, you could build a yoke, where a yoke later on for two, and a yoke later would allow you to go on your own board later, and you could either uproot or harvest a field. We'll talk about those actions later. 
You could buy a windmill, and that essentially is every time you plant a vine, you'd gain a point, but you can only do that once per year. You could have a cottage, which allows you to bring more visitors. And you have a tasting room, which is at six, but when you give a vineyard tour, you gain, an, you gain a point, but only once per year. So different things that you can build. And you can also build a better cellar, medium or large. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. So giving a tour is exactly what it sounds like. You gain two, and if you go to the bonus spot, you get an initial dollar for three bucks. For selling one grape tokens, well, if you have grapes on your board, let's just say, I'll tell you how you get them here in just a moment. But if you have grapes in your board here, you could sell any grape in this aisle for one, any grape in this aisle for two, and any grape in this aisle for three. You could sell a grape, one or more grape tokens from that spot. And if you went here, you'd get an additional bonus, uh, a victory point for going in the middle for the bonus. And here you can plant. Uh, you can plant one normally, or if you go to the bonus spot, you can plant two. So let's say I had the trellis, and let's say I had, yeah, just the trellis here. I could plant up to two right now if I went to that bonus spot, and I could put two of these in the field. Now notice I have the trellis, and I have the trellis so I could plant this, and I have this which has nothing. So right now I have a field. You just have to make sure that you have three different, completely different fields that you can plant to. As long as the numbers, total numbers of the grapes don't add up to more than six, you're good. So here we're not at six, we have one red and two white, and that's how you plant grapes. There's a place here where you can play a summer visitor card. This just allows you to break some of the rules of the game. I'll show you some of these more in, in the future, but they allow you to break rules in sort of the summer aspect of the game. Now here's a spot called Gain One Dollar. You can, and as many people can go here as you want. Notice the, the dotted lines there, it's white. And you can go there in either season of winter or, or summer. Now you don't have to play all your workers in the summer because each of your workers are only going, your worker pool is only going to be able to go in the summer or the, or the winter. Because when summer turns to winter, you can't take workers from summer and place them on the winter. All the workers you have at the beginning of the year, are gonna, you're going to have to decide whether to put them in the summer or the winter. So after all the summer actions happen, you've got a fall, which means you get to draw one of these visitor cards. You can draw a summer visitor card or a uh, blue visitor card. Again, they break rules in those aspects of the games. I'll show you some of those in just a moment. Then we go to winter, which allows us to place on the board into some of these winter spots. So let's take a look at what those do. Uh, this place allows you to play one of these winter cards, uh, winter visitors. Again, this bonus spot allows you to do an additional one. I'll show you some of those cards in just a moment. This allows you to draw a wine order card. Let's look at those. So these wine order cards show you what you need in order to fulfill orders. For example, this one needs a, a five of white wine. It will give me two points and we'll get some residual income of one at the end of each round because of this. So what does this mean? Well, on my wine board, let's just say I have five white. I would have enough to do this, but I don't just, that's, remember that was drawing the card. We actually have to go to a spot to fulfill this order, which is here. If someone goes here, you fill an order. If they go to the bonus spot, you get a point and you get to fill an order. And so for example, I could take this five, take it off my board, put it back in the pot, and we get two points and move that up one. We go two there. And we would move up to one on the residual. I'll talk to you what that does later. Now keep in mind, to have done that, I would have needed to have a medium cellar, which costs $4, and I would have built that during the summertime. All the small cellar you can do for free. To any of these wines here, you need a medium cellar. And any of these wines here, you need a large cellar, which is $6 to build. So let's just assume I would have had a medium cellar there at that point. But there's some other ones, like this one. Uh, I would have needed to have at least a seven and a six of red. Again, I would have needed to, to have built previously the large cellar for that one, right there. And that I could have fulfilled that order by going to that spot and fulfilling it. If I had one larger, that's okay. I can still do it as well. I don't even get any change back, and these would go away as well, and I could fulfill that. That one would be five points, and I got two dollars on the residual scale. And there's some different wines like blushes, and there's some sparkling ones. So this shows me that I need one white and two reds to equal a uh, sparkling, or I can use one white and one red to get a blush. So let's look at how this works. Now, to, to, to see how this works, let's talk about the action of making wine. You'd go in this spot here to make up to two wine tokens, and if you went to the bonus spot, you could do up to three tokens. Now, when I make wine tokens, typically I would take the five white here, and I would just put it to the five white there, and I'd take the two red here, and I'd put it to the two red here. But in some cases, you might want to do some things a little differently, because this, I need a blush wine, and this shows me that Blush is, I need a, it combines a white and a red, and I need a value of seven. So I could take the five white and the two red, which add up to seven, put the red and the white together, and make this a seven blush, which would be here, 
course I had a large seller. This would be the seven. And both of those would have gotten turned into, one of them goes away and the other one together they turn into a blush. And that's how you make wine of either the same colors or different colors. And to do the sparkling, you'd have to do one white and two reds to get the sparkling. And that's how you make the wine. But how do you get the grapes down here in the first place? Well, you can go here to harvest a field or go to here and harvest two fields. Well, here I would harvest this field. I'd add up all the grapes. So I have two of white and one of red. So I would put the, my grape token on the two of white and the one of red. And that's how you harvest. You can harvest once per year. I also could have harvested if I had the yoke that I had bought earlier for two and constructed it. I can go there with any worker and harvest a field as well. You can also uproot a vine, which essentially is taking a card from your vineyard back into your hand. Maybe you want to replace it with something else later. And the last one in the winter is to pay to train. So you could actually add a worker because you start with three and I could put a, you know, here I'd get a, it'd be a dollar less. So it's $4 to train or $3 if I go to the bonus spot. And I would get an additional worker to take back uh, at my spot. Speaking of workers, let's talk about this grande worker. Let's say I really wanted to go here. We're in a three-player game. There's no spots left. I can take my grande worker and put it on the spot and still take that action. But of course, I only get it once per year. So we've gone through sp summer, spring, fall, and winter, and then we go to year end. So what happened is this residual income here, you would get the income um, here, which is, you know, depending on every time we fulfilled those order cards, these will start to move up. So as you com uh, complete orders, at the end of the year, you're going to start getting more and more money. So if I was here, every year I'd get three at the end. This person would get every year, get four. And as they create more, fulfill more orders, those will go up as we saw on the fulfill order cards. We also get to age our wine because thematically, the wine gets better with age. And each of these would go up one on your your, your, your grape spots and your wine spots. And the starting player would get given to the player uh, to the right. It's actually uh, counterclockwise. And then the, in that uh, order, we would then put the roosters and start a new round. So I haven't talked about some of the special ability cards. Let's look at those. So the, for the summer cards, some of them, the auctioneer, you could discard four cards to gain either two points or $4. This one, you could build one of those structures at a $3 discount. Sweet, you don't need as much money. Uh, here you could draw one uh, winter visitor and one order card. Now some of the winter cards look something like this. Uncertified uh, ecologist. Lose one point to upgrade your seller to the next level. That's much better than paying four or six dollars respectively. Uh, this one, increase the value of one wine token by two and fill one order. So you could do this by going to that spot to play the card and you wouldn't have to go to the spot to play the order. That's good if you get blocked there. Uh, fill one order and or sell at least one grape, gain one point if you do both. I actually used this to help win the game last time. So those are some of the things that those cards do. So each year you're deciding where you want to go, summer versus winter, you're drawing some cards, you're doing some year end, you're clearing all your workers off the board, and you continue to do that until somebody has at least 20, they can go over 20, and at the end of that round, whoever has the most points is the winner. Okay, well there's Viticulture. Now recently this game's gotten a lot of buzz by a lot of notable uh, board game media personalities. Uh, the second edition came out, which gave you that grande worker, which allows you to go into a place where somebody else is. Uh, you know, and, and then obviously the new Tuscany expansion came out, which then reinvigorated a lot of people talking about this game. So I was really interested in it because I really love the theme and I do like worker placement games. So how does this stack up? So first of all, components and artwork, it's phenomenal. The, the artwork's awesome in this game. I love how they have that board where you can flip it over and it can be super clean. If you really, if you really know the game well, you can have a clean board on both yours and the, and, and the other board. All those cool wooden tokens like the windmill and the, the yoke and the, you know, the, the, the irrigation system. It's cool to have all those and a rooster. Nice, nice wooden components. Uh, so components and artwork is excellent. Uh, gameplay is actually very good. It's, it's, uh, I felt like it was, it really is a straight Euro. I mean, it, it feels like a Euro game. You gotta do this, to get this, to do this, to do this, to then finally get points, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're getting vine cards and then you're planting the vines and then you're harvesting the vines and then you're moving the vines, uh, moving the grapes to wine and then you're getting an order and then you're fulfilling that order. So at the beginning of the game, it's taking you six steps to get points, you know, the bigger points in most stances. And then after you have your vine, your vineyards going and stuff, maybe it's four, but you're doing this to this, to this, to this, to this, and it's in a standard Euro game. Um, so it's a pretty typical uh, worker placement game. There's not anything earth shattering new here. It's pretty standard. 
um, and it, it does feel like a tight, very tight euro. I, you know, it's tense. You always feel like you want to do more things than you can, um, especially when people start blocking you. And, and, and you got to have patience with this game because, you know, you want to get this order done. But man, you got to do this and then that and then that. And that might be two to three rounds away, depending on what's going on and where people are going. So as a straight Euro game, I think, think it's excellent. Uh, it's well balanced. You've got a lot of opportunities. You've got different things you can buy. You can, you know, obviously you're going to be upgrading your cellars and things, the obvious things like that. But, you know, do you want to go after the windmill? Or do you want to go after the tasting room? Or, do, you know, different things that allow you to go into different avenues and explore the game and give it a lot of replayability value. So I think it's actually a well-designed game and it's very good. And if you like straight ahead Euros, worker placement, this is definitely going to be one you want to check out. For me, uh, personally, it, it was a little too euro -y for my personal taste but it doesn't matter because it was I can look at this objectively and say I can tell this is a great game I can see why there's a lot of love for it uh, and it is great so if you're looking for a straight euro that feels tight that feels very balanced that has a lot of decisions to make and you don't mind having it and you like that straight euro uh, experience then you definitely gonna want to check this out if you if you're kind of half and half on euros like I am and you like some that are maybe more backstabbery and maybe some more merit thrash things thrown in maybe some more interaction this one doesn't have as much as that it's really straight euro but it's a good one so if you like those straight type of euros and your worker placement games this is definitely going to want to check out because it is a fantastic design that's viticulture thanks so much for watching the dice tower videos find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com you can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.